Hi, and welcome to the SwiftFox Build Channel. I'm Nathan, and I'm building a KitFox Series 7 Supersport. On this channel, I'm going to document the building and test flight phases of my KitFox build. The videos will be mostly update videos, with maybe a few that are deep dives into particular aspects of the build process. And in this first video, I'm going to give some background information on what a KitFox is and speak to some of the specifics of my particular build and what's been done in the project so far. A KitFox is a two-seat, side-by-side, single-engine kit aircraft. The kit part means that you build the aircraft yourself. Yes, mum, you can build your own airplane. KitFox aircraft currently manufacture three variants of the current Series 7 design. They are the Speedster, the Supersport, and the STI, which is, stands for Short Takeoff and Landing Inspired. And the variants are very similar, with their differences being around their performance at cruise and takeoff and landing. I've chosen the Supersport as it sits right in the sweet spot in the middle with good cruise performance of about 105 knots and a relatively short takeoff and landing roll of about 300 feet. Of course, the actual performance of an aircraft is going to depend on its own weight, how it was built, etc. So these numbers are a rough estimate or a guide on what to expect. A couple of other features of the KitFox design that are really great are that it can be equipped with a tailwheel or tricycle gear configuration and can be easily converted between both even after completion of the aircraft. So you can switch between tailwheel and tricycle you know, and vice versa as much as you want, depending on what you need. The wings also are full back and this is very useful for storage or ground transportation uh, relative to maybe other aircraft where you'd have to remove the wings entirely. Many KitFox builders will build their KitFox in their garage and once finished will load it up onto a trailer with the wings folded and drive it to the airport. So what about me? How much experience do I have building airplanes? Well, none. Absolutely zero. I have uh, no idea what I'm doing. I did put together a lot of Airfix models when I was a kid, but I don't think any of that counts. So I've no real experience right now in this kind of thing. Uh, but I'm confident I can figure it out and learn as I go. The manual kit KitFox provides looks really great. And with what is available on the internet these days, you can kind of learn nearly anything. So it's going to be a big challenge, uh, but something that I think is well within my abilities. With building your own aircraft, you have nearly endless customization options so that the end product is the, an aircraft that's perfect for you. Uh, in terms of those choices that I've made for my build, uh, work in front to back, I'm going to go with the Rotax 912 IS engine uh, paired with a 70 inch three blade Airmaster constant speed prop. This seems to be the ideal engine and prop combination for the Supersport based on uh, what I've read and the conversations I've had with other uh, builders and owners. Uh, the engine's really fuel efficient uh, and its preferred fuel is unleaded automotive fuel, although it can take 100 low lead avgas too, which is what's most commonly available at my local airports. For the instrument panel, uh, I'm leaning towards a full Garmin stack with the 10-inch G3X Touch as the primary flight display. Uh, I'm really impressed with Garmin's uh, avionics products. They kind of feel like the apple of the avionics world in terms of the hardware and software integration and build quality. I was also fortunate enough to meet and have dinner with some of the team at Garmin that build the G3X Touch uh, at AirVenture in 2019. And we chatted about their development processes and approach to product development. And I was really impressed by uh, how they go about their work. My kit Fox will be configured as a tail wheel. The main gear will consist of the Grove aluminium spring gear with eight inch uh, Behringer wheels and brakes and probably Desser's uh, 27 and a half inch uh, Aero Classic Tundra tires. In terms of factory provided options, I've nearly gone with every option that will save weight and or increase cruise speed. So carbon fiber cowls, streamlined lift struts, uh, lighter brake pedals, etc. I've also added the options that provide nice conveniences like the adjustable brake pedals and the extended uh, cargo bay. And there are a few things that I haven't settled on yet, you know, such as paint scheme. And I'm gonna talk about those in later videos when I'm working on making those decisions. So that's a bit of the background on a KitFox kit aircraft and my particular build. So let's get up to date on what's happened so far. First up, uh, the kit arrived on March 25th. 
the factory is based in Homedale, Idaho, and I'm in Vancouver, Canada. Heather and Brandon from KitFox uh, drove the kit from the factory to Bellingham, which is a small city about 30 minutes uh, south of the border in the US. And we met them there and transferred the kit into a U-Haul truck that we had rented. Now, KitFox recommends a budget truck to transport the kit in, uh, as it has a wooden floor that they're able to secure the fuselage down to. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have access to budget rental trucks here for crossing the border, so we had to go with U-Haul. It's not a big problem. Uh, we were advised to just have a lot more ratchet straps and moving blankets on hand to wrap and secure the parts to prevent any damage. Uh, we had ordered three dozen blankets from U-Haul, but when we picked up the truck, there were none available at all. So instead, we stocked up on a lot of bubble wrap uh, and as many blankets as we could afford from Home Depot. Uh, in the end, it was fine. Uh, we had such a short distance to travel and Brandon, as you'd expect, is an expert at packing the kits into trucks. So nothing was damaged at all uh, during our short trip back. Then unloading the kit from the truck didn't take long either. Uh, there was another airplane in this hangar uh, at the time, so we had to work around it. Uh, but it's since moved on to its new home and we've got now full use of the hangar space. After the kit arrived, the first thing I did was I sent uh, what's called a letter of intent to the uh, MDRA inspection service. Uh, the MDRA inspection service is the kind of governing body tasked with overseeing the construction process uh, of home built aircraft and issuing their uh, special certificates of airworthiness. Uh, the letter of intent, it's just a simple form you fill out and, and it's primarily a notification that you're about to start building an aircraft. Uh, after uh, MDRA received the letter, uh, they provide you with a file number that you use uh, in ongoing communications and to uh, arrange inspections. On inspections, uh, there's commonly uh, two. Uh, the first is called the pre-cover inspection and it is done before the aircraft skin is put on. Uh, so that uh, areas that will be inaccessible, you know, after the skin is on can be inspected prior to that happening. The second is the final inspection. And as the name implies, that happens at the end when we're ready to fly. So with my letter of intent submitted, uh, next up was building a stand for the fuselage to sit on and rotisseries for the wings to go into. I had seen another builder, uh, Steve Henry, on one of his recent videos showed how he puts his fuselage, fuselages onto stands with the wings kind of at a, an eye level working height. Uh, and I thought that looked like a good idea. Uh, so I did something similar. Because I'm going to be out here mostly on my old building, uh, I put the stand and the rotisseries on wheels so I can move them around the hangar by myself. And that's been working out uh, pretty well so far. The wings can turn in the rotisseries and I'm able to lock them in every 90 degrees so that I can work on them without them moving. Um, I may do every 45 degrees if the need arises later in the build, uh, but for now 90 degrees will allow me to have them out horizontal when I need to work on them and then uh, vertical like this when I'm just uh, keeping them stored. I've just completed the inventory process, which is going through every box and every part received and checking it against a list of all the parts that I should have. This wasn't too bad and only took a couple of days. Uh, I did do it by myself and it would have been much quicker with a second person, uh, but it wasn't too long in the grand scheme of things. My method for inventory was pretty simple. Uh, I started with box number one. Uh, I took each item out, found it in the list and put it on the table. Uh, and then once I'd finished box number one, I put everything back into it and grabbed box number two. And I kept doing this until I'd completed all the boxes. I found the inventory list was uh, nicely laid out and each box mostly contained parts on the same or adjacent pages in the inventory list. Uh, so you didn't need to do too much hunting. Uh, a couple of boxes had parts for different areas so they didn't require going through the various pages to find where they were listed. But again, it was only a couple of boxes. In the end, uh, nearly everything was accounted for. I think I'm only short uh, one machine screw and 11 AN nuts. Uh, so the team at Kitfox did a great job of packing everything. Uh, I do have a few items uh, on back order that I'll be receiving later, uh, namely the uh, streamlined lift struts, a uh, couple of rod ends and some lights. Uh, but I have everything I need to get started now. Once, every, uh, once inventory was completed, uh, I put mostly everything on these shelves here and uh, left some items in the large boxes. And then some of the other larger parts are kind of scattered around the hangar. 
One mistake I made early on in the inventory process, uh, but quickly realized, was there are some part numbers that are used in multiple places in the aircraft. Bolts, nuts, rivets, kind of examples of these. Uh, for example, uh, you might come across a bag of bolts uh, and find them in the inventory list, uh, but it says you should have 20 of them, but you only have 10 in the bag in your hand. Uh, now, the inventory list is divided up into multiple sections, so the fuselage, wings, landing gear, etc. So you might actually be looking at the wrong page of the inventory list. So you just need to double check uh, the label on the bag of parts and the heading on the inventory list page you're on, just to make sure you're looking in the right section. So with inventory now completed, I'm ready to start building. And I'm starting on the horizontal tail and elevator. And the next video will contain the first build, build update on those. Uh, but before I wrap up this video, I'll quickly explain the project name. As all projects need a good name, I'm dubbing my build uh, SwiftFox, and there's three reasons for it. The first is I have some experience using the Swift programming language uh, in my professional career. The second is there is a species of fox called the SwiftFox that are very closely related to the KitFox fox species. And third, like all other home builders, I'm hoping to complete my kit project swiftly. We're going to have to see how that goes. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.